Hey folks, Matt from MurderTheImage.com. The new Panasonic GH5S. Uh, new super low light sensor at 10 megapixels. Um, Cinema 4K. We've got uh, dual native ISO technology that allows us to shoot at 800 plus 5,000 and essentially get the, the benefits of the low light ability of 800, but at 5,000 ISO. Pretty cool technology. Kind of some wizardry there that's amazing. I've seen it. It looks impressive. I've seen it on big 4K TVs at Panasonic events, and I've been sitting there going, wow, that's pretty crazy. We've also got uh, the ability to shoot with an all-intra 400 megabits a second MBPS um, 4K codec now with 422 and 10-bit. We've got a new autofocus system, negative 5 EV. Like, there's a lot of new cool stuff packed into this camera. But um, the question is, does Panasonic know something you don't know? Is there enough in here? Has do they, do they have enough research behind market research, I guess I should say, behind the decision to bring this camera to market that they know that this is going to be a big seller? Is it was it was it a worthwhile venture? Because the GH5 is already a killer video camera. Granted, if I just wanted a camera for video, I'm not sure there's much that would be better now than this GH5S. It seems to be the new king of video when you figure what the camera offers, what it offers all built in. I mean, it's even got the built-in V-Log at no cost now. And you have a camera that in an ecosystem, the Micro Four Thirds system with all the different adapters and speed boosters and things like you could do just about anything like this. This may be the new king of video. And obviously that's where Panasonic, what it's going for. They want to dominate the video on that side. The only thing I can see that possibly Panasonic hasn't addressed with this camera is, um, well, you know what? Let's save that for another video because it's a whole other topic by itself. But, so, king of video. Is the new GH5S the king of video? Does Panasonic know something we don't know? Is there enough market share for this? Have they put enough into this that it's going to be the killer that it is, uh, that we think it might be? Or... Um, I'm just going to get my notes on this here because I've been doing some thinking on this. Um, did, did, did it not cost that much to do this? Did they bring this to market with very little cost? Was there very little downside to them bringing this camera to market? Because essentially a lot of the GH5S comes from the parts bin of the GH5. What that means is no R&D cost, no additional manufacturing cost. They already have that stuff built. Really, the major difference is the new sensor. And so whatever R&D costs and manufacturing costs went into taking that, that sensor and building it down to a 10 megapixel sensor and a better low light sensor. I mean, we already have dual native ISO tech from Panasonic. It was in their video cameras, their camcorders and things. So we can put a lot of the parts over. Essentially, I'm thinking there's not a lot of cost to develop this camera. And... Uh, so with a low cost to bring it to market, a low cost to bring this camera to market, the GH5S to market, there's not a lot of downside to make it an offering. It's not like it, it, it did cost them a lot of money. It's not like they had to put a lot of resources into it to put it there. So now you have a camera that is better suited than even the venerable GH5 for video. You got the G9, that's their new king of the hill for photography, king of the hill in the micro four thirds realm anyways, but a very, very capable photographic camera. You still have the GH5, I guess probably for people that want the best of both worlds. Although frankly, if I was more video centric, I would go with the GH5S now. And if I was more G, uh, photographic centric, I would go with the G9. On the other hand, the GH5 is probably going to be available at a lower price and more people may decide it straddles both worlds more adequately for them. So you've got a very strong lineup now, GH5S, GH5, and the G9. You've also got a lot of other good stuff in the lineup. I mean, we've got the G85 that I'm shooting with right now. You've even got the older predecessor to it, the G7, which is still a very, very low-cost, capable video camera. You've got the, um, the, G, um, the GX8 right here. It is um, a very capable, very nice camera. It's got my favorite lens on it, the 42.5. So, um, and, there, and there's other cameras too. Those are, those are some of the, the best and the, and the brightest, but uh, a very well-developed, flushed-out lineup now from Panasonic. So I guess what I was thinking was, did, did Panasonic know something we didn't know? Did Panasonic know something you didn't know? Um, the collective you. In the sense of, did they have the market research there 
to justify bringing this GH5S to market? Or was it more of a question of it didn't really cost them much to do this? They had nothing to lose. They used a lot of parts from the GH5 part bin, and they just tweaked a sensor to make a really good low-light sensor, threw in the dual-native ISO tech, threw in some other really good goodies like internal 422 10-bit, Cinema 4K, pre-installed V-Log, uh, all intro for, uh, at uh, 400 megabits a second at 4K with 10 to, to, uh, 422 10-bit, and, and a new negative uh, 5 EV autofocus system. Um, all great stuff, but was it such low cost to them to do that that they had nothing to lose? Now they've got a, a product offering that's more differentiated and with very little... Uh, disadvantage or, or there's no, no cost added really to them to bring that GH5S to market. I mean, there was some cost. We had to R&D the sensor. But essentially, that's all I can see. It's not like you had to design a whole new camera from the ground up. This is really a tweak to GH5. So what do you guys think? Uh, do they have market research to suggest that they, they could have even gone more all out and built an even crazier one and put more money into it? Or do you think it's more on the side of there was really nothing to lose because this camera didn't cost them an awful lot to, to bring to market because of all the existing stuff out of the GH5. And now that they have, they could possibly dominate the video market with it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Which way does your thinking go on this? I'm curious to hear. Let's have a discussion on it. Um, so I'm very interested in the GH5S, very interested to see how it does in the market, and um, very interested to get my hands on it at the next Panasonic event. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Looking forward to hearing what you have to say. We'll be back soon here at artofimage.com.